Hello, so for my presentation, I'll be analyzing two of my current favorite TV shows, The Midnight Gospel and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I will be reflecting on how they both emblem concepts such as absurdity and mechanics and slapstick, in addition to sort of reflecting as well as what these preferences uh, reflect about my personality. Firstly, The Midnight Gospel. Uh, it's just a brief synopsis of this show. It's a Netflix animated series and it was released back in early 2020 and the main character is a guy named Clancy and we follow along as he goes on outer space adventures looking for guest speakers to speak on his space cast or podcast. Uh, it's just an incredibly unique show that dives into topics such as mortality, love, religion, and spirituality. Through its psychedelic uh, animations and Paired with its podcast style dialogue, it does a great job in creating absurdity to communicate its profound messages. One of my personal favorite episodes in the series is the second one called Officers and Wolves. It supports theories from The Logic of the Absurd by Jerry Palmer that we have discussed in class. So Clancy travels to a planet run by clowns and shortly upon his arrival, the clowns herd him with other creatures and they pack them on a truck and they ship them off to a slaughterhouse. So on that truck, Clancy meets a, a deer dog who consents to being a guest speaker on Clancy's podcast. Palmer identifies absurdity through the terms peripatia and syllogism, and peripatias of comedy are described as the shock or surprise factors in a story the film is telling. So what makes this humorous is syllogism, which is a system of reasoning in which one moves from a well-known state of affairs through an empirical observation to conclusion, which results in nature it being correct. As quoted from Palmer's essay in the readings, The Logic of the Absurd, it's the balance between plausibility and implausibility that makes peripatia into comic surprise and not some other form of surprise, hor horrific surprise, for example. <laughs> Horrific surprise, for instance. For the totality of these processes, it seems appropriate to reserve the title, The Logic of the Absurd. So example one of this construct is when Clancy and Annie arrive at the slaughterhouse or meat factory. Uh, they are loaded onto a conveyor belt and we see their mutilation as they are repeatedly crushed until they are slushed down to the consistency of a sloppy joe. However, they, their facial features, such as their eyes, nose, mouth, and ears, remain completely intact. Uh, furthermore, this surprise change of their physical form does not affect the syllogism of the conversation they are having as it remains completely indifferent from the rapidly uh, changing setting. In addition, there are also illogical elements that defy our known conventionalities regarding the autonomy of the human body. So the clowns that are seen throughout this episode, their arms are used invertedly in a very creepy way. However, this does not hinder their functionality whatsoever. They wear long cloaks, but once they um, lift their cloaks, it's revealed that they're like a parasite um, race that has a host body that they possess and these elements are never addressed or exaggerated upon and their revealing is kept to very casual showing how these illogical elements still bear a type of logic in their universe so these examples in the episode implicitly create surprises that disrupt and challenge our syllogism of how we perceive the functionalities and correct mannerisms of the human body of just being a human being in general the show's aesthetics promote the theater of cruelty. There's so much to ingest while watching. There are moments of difficulty on specifically what to focus on. Despite this sort of bombardment, I thought the setup was very clever because the synergy between this dense dialogue with the cartoon visuals helps create a greater meaning that would have not been conveyed by one single element alone. So moving on to the next show, we have It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. In the sitcom, it's a collective of white trash characters attempting to run an unsuccessful pub and it showcases many elements of mechanics and slapstick. Specifically in the episode, the gang goes to the Jersey Shore. High on childhood nostalgia, Dee and Dennis take their friends to the Jersey Shore as they try to relive their childhood experiences there. However, their vacation proves to be anything but relaxing. According to Henry 
Bergen's essay, Laughter, an essay on the meaning of the comic, he believes that humans are at their best when they are mentally present, and if one fails to do so, our bodies go into autopilot, and the failure of adjusting to changing external conditions thus results in physical comedy. Bergson writes, and upon them we can test the truth of the law of which all our preceding analysis gave an inkling a law in accordance which which we will define all broadly comic situations in general any arrangement of acts and events is comic which gives us in a single combination the illusion of life and the distinct impression of a mechanical arrangement it makes us laugh only because it symbolizes a special play of moral events this play itself being the symbol of an altogether material diversion The element of reputation can be exemplified throughout this episode, supporting Bergson's ideas that if someone is thinking in the past, they tend to repeat a particular action. So in the beginning of the episode, when the gang arrives to the Jersey Shore to cover or conceal the fact that they're drinking alcohol, they put their alcohol in sunscreen bottles. However, Charlie does not get the memo and just starts to chug bottles with actual sunscreen in them. Another example would be Dee's attempt to get into the tropical spirit, she goes to get her hair braided in cornrows, and then they go to an amusement park. However, at the amusement park, one of her braids gets stuck into a ride, and the braid gets yanked out of her scalp, and she then has to go to the hospital for stitches. Later on in the episode, another occurrence that happens is that Mac and Frank fall asleep on a raft off the coast of the shore and they wake up and they're in the middle of the ocean and their rum ham that they brought along with them is seen floating away in the distance and it doesn't take too long before they begin to become stir crazy and contemplate cannibalism so as bergen promotes the gang's automation and an aptitude to adjust to their reality is what results in physical comedy this episode can also be related to themes in silent film and slapstick this focuses on the body and its relation to the new It was formed as a reflection to the new encounters with urbanization, industrialization, and other modern uh, progressiveness, and it was a way to help process anxiety for people unable to adapt to the future. So a lot of the humor that was played out in The Gang Goes to the Jersey Shore was caused by Dee and Dennis's inaptitude or inability to cope with the changing times of the Jersey Shore. Just reflecting about what my type of humor says about me, so for The Midnight Gospel, which relies heavily on absurdism, According to the teachings of Jerry Palmer, what this says about me is that I seek to challenge or upheave the traditional constructs of normative behavior that is instilled by society. Just kind of expanding upon this, by finding humor in illogical elements that transform to be logical can also be viewed as a way of rebellion against social rules, etiquette instilled that as an active participant in society, I have to partake in. in order to perform normative behavior, furthermore representing a underlying discontent slash resentment for just reality, this reality in general. For It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, in the episode The Gang Goes to the Jersey Shore, it utilizes a lot of elements of mechanics and slapstick, and according to Henry Bergson, this means that I want to help people be their best selves. Laughter can be a punitive action, and the main characters, and it's always sunny are looked as social deviants and i laugh at them as a form of punishment or discipline so they can do better in the future i am also able to partake in social cohesion that aims in progressing human society forward as well 